Good morning, everyone. So, well, that was fast, <laughs> was all I need to say about the swap sign up. And I told you guys I'd probably do about 40, 45, and then it was 50. And by the time I'm responding to people yesterday, and then it filled up overnight before I could even respond, <laughs> um, I had already allowed like over 60. And then I was like, I need to start counting. So when I counted, I'm like, oh no, that's like, I was way over already. Way too many people have signed up. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you have heard from me, you've probably heard, you know, I'm sorry, it's full. Um, and I'm sorry, it just filled up so fast. And I'm only one person, I can only do so much. And um, especially since I'm doing two or four, or flap or no flap, which I'm doing flaps, so that's why mine are like this. But, um, you know, you have different options. It's just. Whew, it's a lot. So um, thank you guys so much for the interest that you took in it. Um, it's quite possible if we do a altered embellishment case swap, I might say that people who haven't signed up before or who didn't sign up for this one or weren't able to will get preference next time because it does fill up really fast. And the reason I even made a video saying, hey, I'm trying to get this video out today so you guys can have the info is because the people on the East Coast, if they go to sleep and my video comes out at 9 o'clock on my time, that's like midnight, you know, and I don't think that was super fair. So I did put out that earlier video and a lot of people responded to that. So uh, that's kind of why I did it that way. Um, so just keep that in mind if you think, oh, you know, I'd rather do an altered embellishment case later and you want to drop out of this one, let me know. But that doesn't mean you're not going to get in the other one. It's just I'm going to leave it open and, you know, people who uh, want to sign up who haven't signed up for this one will get um, priority, I guess, if you want to say. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, which there probably will be an altered embellishment case swap. It's just I know... It, they're like so hard to find, but I know a lot of us have some from before, so this will be our time, our chance to like use them up, um, and that'll be that. So keep an eye out uh, for today's video. I'm going to decorate my uh, pocket uh, loaded pockets. You know, if I use any items that are available, I'll link them in the description box. Those are affiliate links, or will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. So. We created the loaded pockets um, in the first video. The tutorial is only like less than 40 minutes because I talked for like 20 minutes about the rules and then uh, just doing this. So this is very quick. I mean, to me, this works up super quick. And if you're using the Cricut um, cut file, which a lot of people seem like are, um, it's even faster, right? So really great. I pulled out some papers. I don't know what I'm going to use. I had an idea of what I wanted to use because I'm going to do mine more kind of gingerbread. doesn't mean you have to stick to gingerbread or whatever you're, you know, main thing is throughout the whole um, pocket but that would be really sweet right uh, <laughs> pun intended I guess so I was looking for the crafters companion um, um, what's the word the paper pad that came with the tags like before it was like tags that you can make look like cocoa or like a jar or whatever I don't know if you guys remember that I don't even know what those tags are right now I could probably find them I don't know that I need them but uh, that's beside the point but then I saw this one I'm like oh I think this is it I'm like well no because it's not really particularly um, gingerbread, but it is Santa's kitchen. So this is the paper pad I was thinking about. I think there's another one though that came out during that same time. So this is cute because it has like the pastels, but it also has like your regular colorways. So I might use that um, for my layers. Uh, I have this one from Hobby Lobby, I think. No, yeah, right, Paper Studio, yeah. that I've had for a while, and I thought, well, this has a lot of cute colors in it as far as like things I might want to use for my gingerbread just like that red and then I have the plaid one of course we like plaids the only things I wanted this one and I think I used it up last year because I don't see any of it in here I'm like oh did I ever use it up that's a bummer I would like to use that one but I might make some plaid in here we'll see yeah because I don't even see scraps of it and so I'm like I, unless unless it's this one which again it's just bigger than I thought it would be but again it's all gone so <laughs> All right, so I used that up, but we'll see. We might use that. Really quickly, again, let's just go over what is going to be in the loaded pocket, your home for the holidays. I think I might have said home for Christmas in the <laughs> instructions that I fixed it, but either way, you know what I mean. Um, however you interpret that, you know, poinsettias, snowmen, whatever it is that you like that you feel is home for the holidays related, <laughs> that's fine for your theme, like, you know, for your style. I suppose is what I want to say. So again, I forgot to read, talk about the paperclip and dangle in the last video. So of course, um, you can make these on your own for, you know, whatever 
gift you want to give to people. It doesn't have to be because you're in the swap. So um, I do want, after we've decorated and everything, to still add like a rosette like on a pick or like a cute little pick or a dangle or a paper clip. At least one, and that's why I said one, but most times people put more because you really want to load it up, whatever. If there's like a little space you can stick a, like a little paper clip in there, you know, do that or whatever. Uh, an ornament, a handmade ornament, right? And we talked all about that in the other video. A tag or a recipe card. I can say a recipe. I guess I can write card. Um, I am probably going to make my recipe cards on the Cricut if they can write small enough and everything and, uh, you know, just let it do its thing and then cut them out. And maybe with a little inlay, background paper, or whatever. Make it cute, right? Most time recipe cards are like 3 by 5 If you want to make a bigger one, like 4 by 6 I, you know, whatever you think if you want to put in here that fits in here, nicely right this is five by seven so however you want to do your recipe card again a tag with at least two or three embellishments which is really nothing I think three or more is really where we're at right um, a shaker mix with at least three different kind of spangles it cannot just all be one thing like just a bunch of fine glitter or three colors of fine glitter or three colors of sequins or or more or whatever it needs to have more than just that I mean if you want to put three colors of sequins in there that's fine but also add in some stars or some little like shapes I think I'm gonna have some gingerbread shapes in mine because I have this die set that has really tiny gingerbreads like this and I thought that would be really cute if I can add some of those in so I'm gonna have to cut those out of course tons of them um, good thing it cuts like five or six at a time so I think I'll use that you know whatever it is um, a treat and that can be anything if something you made something you purchased um, it could be craft related it can be a snack a little edible kind of um, food item that's already pre-packaged please are like sealed up from the manufacturer um, whatever fits in there right it's literally whatever fits in there everything has to go in the pocket I'm just gonna reiterate that please you guys everything has to go inside here you can package this up obviously with like a plastic bag on the outside which is what I like to do plastic sleeve or whatever and I'll include the link for the ones I use in the description box but what I'm saying is it shouldn't just have like this big bulky item off the side or something big on the back or you know everything that you're including for your loaded pocket needs to go inside the loaded pocket okay and then we're decorating the front so and all, all throughout. <laughs> three bows of rosettes are a mix of each, but three of them. So two rosettes, one bow. Two bows, one rosette. Three rows, three bows. Three bows or three rosettes or whatever. Uh, they have to be at least bigger than an inch, okay? An inch or bigger. And then five die cuts. And that can just be anything. It can be layered die cuts. It can just be words that you popped out. It can be whatever you want, at least five. And these are all at least, okay? So that way everyone has the basic guidelines. And then, of course, you're going to decorate your loaded pocket. And that needs to be decorated like really fun right so different layers matte layers matte layers by themselves are not going to cut it you guys you got to do a little something more I'll tell you that little sticker from coordination's paper stay on there okay so having said all that i guess i don't need this right now uh i'm gonna go ahead and start cutting papers down i don't think i'm gonna decorate the very front until i'm like ready to do that so uh, first I'm just gonna do my matte layers again on the Cricut cut file I give you matte layers for the inside here I gave matte layers for this one I gave you a matte layer for this one on the outside not just the pocket because the pocket gets covered so the matte layer I gave you was for that for the top and the bottom if you want and for the back and the front but just really quickly let's write these things down so front flap your matte layer and I'm just going to give you the numbers that I like, but if you want to do quarters, then go with quarters. I like seven eighths, so it's barely going to show anything on the edge, and it gets it that much sturdier. So this is five. Oh, it is five by five. I couldn't remember if I made it a square. So this is five by five. This measurement is five by five. So I'm going to go four and seven eighths square, okay, on that one. For this guy, he is two and a half inches deep. I know those numbers. I just don't remember this one. So two and a half by five. So front pocket. If it was two and a half by five, I'm gonna go two and three eighths by four and seven eighths. And then this inside one is four inches tall by five again, so larger pocket, I don't know. <laughs> or inside pocket, I guess I could call it. Uh, again, it's four by uh, five, so I'm gonna do three and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. What's nice about having the same number, the four and seven eighths, four and seven eighths, is when you're cutting your paper, I would just cut four and seven inches wide and then start cutting in the other direction, the two and the three eighths or three and seven eighths. So you're going to get a good amount of paper or cuts, you know, on your one paper. And the one in the back is again five by seven. Um, back panel is five by seven. So let's do four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. Again, come up with your own numbers. If you don't like eighths, do quarters. So, you know, it'd be two and a quarter by four and three quarters. 
uh, three and three quarters by four and three quarters, and then um, four and three quarters by six and three quarters, right? If you want to decorate the inside flaps, that's up to you. It, it's extra, but I'm just going to give you the numbers. Whatever you put out here, you basically you can put on the front here, right? Um, this top one is one and a quarter inches deep by five, so top and bottom. I'm just going to call them gussets, even though it's not a gusset, but you know what I'm saying, like that space. I guess spine is really a better word. Uh, it's going to be one and a quarter by five, so I'm going to do one and uh, ch -ch -ch, an eighth by four and seven eighths. So the top and the bottom are that, if that's the measurement you want. And then the back of this one is basically the same, again, back panel and outer back panel, let's say. It will be the same, four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. So I'm just going to cut up some paper right now just to get these layers going in here. I'm definitely going to put some things. So again, if you're going to close yours up, let's say with ribbon, let's say you're doing the pocket, um, and you want that ribbon to be in here, I would say glue it so that it's under this tab and then it just comes up the front so you can tie it because it's you're not going to be really able to glue it here. Does that make sense? Because this would be up here to meet it. Unless you glue it in here somewhere, which would be weird, right? Or make a hole for it. I don't know. Um, you should glue it under this um, mat layer. And that way the ribbon's just laying there. And then this other one can be glued under this mat layer. And then they tie together, right? Uh, I think ribbon's actually a really cute idea. But I was going to go with um, Velcro. But I think a ribbon would be very lovely. <laughs> Let me see if I even... I was going to say, do I have a lot of space for Velcro? There's like a half inch overlap here. I don't know how big my Velcro is. It may or may not work. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so that's it. And um, again, you can do whatever you want with your... It doesn't have to... Like, I want you to make this pocket. But like, let's say you do want this flap to be longer to go all the way down. Make measurements that do that. I don't care. It just has to be this, like, base pocket thing and the reason I'm giving you ideas as far as like how to actually do it is because that way I know how to open it already and it's not that much <laughs> you know like I'm not guessing it like okay what's going on here when we do the exchange so um, you know, do whatever you want uh, let me cut some papers and I'll be I'm cutting pieces like honestly um, it's whatever right it's all wild from this one since again they're four and seven eighths four and seven eighths I cut this one six and seven eighths inches tall and then this one I cut the um, uh, three and seven eighths inches tall and then this little piece is left and guess what it's like almost exactly the size you need here and all we're gonna do is cut a little bit off of it so it really maximizes paper again this is 12 by 12 paper which is typical of pattern papers right I don't think you're gonna have something I know Michaels does put out eight and a half by eleven pattern papers or like hunky dory or something but um, it just works out so I'm gonna cut this down and I'll have it even though I wasn't really planning on using it but uh, it adds the sturdiness and like why not you know if you want it to continue using your papers in that way. I'll okay be right guys, back. so as I'm cutting, um, I also want to do a little stitching just then again. Super curated, cute, do you know the best you can. Um, obviously now everyone has a sewing machine, I'm not referring to that, but I am going to put this piece on top, but I'm also going to put some, um, oh what's this called, pom-pom trim. So I cut this actually a little bit smaller, even though it doesn't look like it, <laughs> but um, I cut this Instead of the four and seven eighths square, I think I did four and three quarter inch square, so that the pom pom trim has some space around there. But either way, I'm still gonna. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it square. I mean, you can trim the or, you know, corner around, do some cute edging, whatever it is you want to do. And I'm gonna bring out um, my Martha Stewart goo punch to make it look like icing. So I might add some of that. But for right now, actually, should I do that first? That way I can stitch around everything. <gasps> okay. So. Hmm. That's interesting. No, I'm still going to just do them by themselves just so I can get it done. To be honest, I'm running low on time, and since it's all filled up, like I just want to get the videos done for you guys. I'm not going to be in a huge rush to finish them up because, again, you know, uh, we have a few weeks to get them done. I just came off of doing the um, swap out for the um, fall ephemera, the fall, fanciful fall ephemera folder, and I'm a little disappointed, guys. A lot of people made them way too thick, and... Again, I don't like that because when we go to swap them out, you see how nice and pristine this folder is? It looks very cute, nice and pristine. When they're too thick, yours messes up other people's, it messes up its own. They get crunched, like crunched or crinkled or like in weird ways, right? Because the other one's next to it and that one's too fat and it's pushing and it'll kink it, you know? This I kinked it, um, 
just because it was sitting here, but it messes up the other folders, you guys, and I really, like, want to impress upon you guys. Like, honestly, I feel, like, so bad at swapping them out. Please don't do that. So with this one, again, don't include anything on the outside of the package. Everything you're going to give to your swap friends are going to be inside, and it needs to fit inside nicely. And if you're not using a pocket, obviously it's going to fit within, you know, the same, like, thickness, okay, guys? Honestly, I really, really, it hurts my heart because, again, things get crushed, and, like, with those, we're supposed to put them in a flow book. It's going to look really nice, but then if you receive your folders and they're, like, wonky and weird, I don't know how to explain it. If you're in a swap and you've <laughs> received a swap that's too thick, you know, you're going to know what I'm talking about. They get kinked, and it looks bad, and... Honestly, I just feel kind of bad right now myself. I'm sorry. So if you got one that's like that, I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know what else to do. I say it until I'm blue in the face. Please do not overstuff your things. Especially this one. It's an ephemera folder. It's not a loaded ephemera folder, okay? It's not meant to be, like, ridiculous. And this one is meant to be, like, fun, but within the parameter of this space, you know? Please, please listen to what I'm saying. It, it makes me really sad because it bums me out. I don't want somebody else to receive something that's squished already. Like, that's not right, you know? Especially if they follow the rules. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and do this. Um, I am going to just stitch around. This thing's already loaded up with gold, gold thread, and I'm just going to have it on, you know, whatever straight stitch. I'm just going to go around and add some stitching just for fun. So that's all I'm going to do to all these pieces, actually. Uh, whatever I use for my mat layers, okay? And I'll be right back. So I have the stitching on that. Again, I'm not going to put this one until later. And so we have these guys. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and stick these down. Now, these are just examples. I would love to go much more wild, but it's like i got to get this video going. So, like, for me, my idea, like, thinking about it is very limited. The time I can sit here and think about it. Um, but, sorry, I'm just looking for something. Uh, I'm just going to glue these down. And then I have some Cricut things that I already have ready to go. So I will get those going, too. So we'll put this on here, and I probably should do this with hot glue, to be honest. But we're using regular glue right now, and that's okay. So all I'm going to do is just glue these down. So glue, 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 obviously a good amount of glue, since I did my stitching. You want to shaker these pockets or some of them. This one I'm keeping kind of basic because this is where the... Um, where I'm going to stick the um, Velcro, you know? Uh, okay, so again, glue on the back of this. And just push it right down in here. It'll fit. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's for. Glue on the back of this. Stick it down in here. And um, I'm not going to glue this one down yet. And then I have one for the outside top that matches this one. So I'll glue those down. Okay, so I haven't stuck this down because, again, I want to put some pom-pom. And now I can just put pom-pom at the very bottom. But I was going to do all around. I wonder if that's a better idea. Just leave it at the bottom. But I already cut. I just wanted it to be really fun. So I'll probably still put it all around. Um, okay, <laughs> you guys. We are running low on time. Um, but I do want to finish up at least the layers today. So, again, the design uh, space I have... A couple of pockets for you guys already if you just want to use those. I've been thinking about this for a little bit, so I, I made a little shaker that's going to be a really cute little gingerbread man shaker. So I think I'll use that. I was going to use that on the outside, but what I think is I'll do is I'll include that as something cute, maybe on a paper clip or something on the inside, just so it, um, it's not just stuck on the thing. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I'll do it later. So right now what I want to do is this. I played with this a little bit earlier, and... This home for the holidays, I thought, oh, cool. <laughs> I had that in one of my cutting files. But interestingly, it had like, um, over here on the E, it had like a weird little, um, and I say weird because it was super basic, like a uh, birdhouse. And all I did was get myself a shape, I uh, got a square, and I kind of covered it over that area. And then I sliced it, <laughs> and I was able to cut off the, um, the tree house. I mean, the birdhouse, sorry. So I'm like, oh, perfect. But now, actually, I do want... I had to separate out the layers for you're going to do that, ungroup it, because when I went to uh, weld it, or slice it, only wanted me to weld, it wouldn't let me slice it, right? So get rid of the layers so that you can just use this brown piece, like it's brown in the example. But look at this lady. I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll put her on the outside. Like she's baking the gingerbread. I don't know. It's a Mrs. Claus, I'm assuming. So I think what I'm going to do is cut her out. I just don't know what color. And then also... Again, she's kind of boring in her own. And if I'm going to put her on the front, honestly, I can make her a lot bigger. Well, this is the other thing. We have Home for the Holidays and then her, if they're both going to be on the front. 
like I need to have the space for them, right? So let me see. Let's see where we're at. About one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six wide, and this thing's only five inches wide, right? So we gotta kind of play around with that and think about what we're gonna do. But I could put her kind of like in here, and then maybe that up there. How is that? One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, this might work. You know, this sizing might work, but <laughs> I want to put something behind her since she's just this weird die cut. I had chosen her because I was going to put her in my swap as one of the die cuts, but we can manipulate her a little bit. Actually, let me just duplicate her and I'll put her somewhere else for that purpose. And then right now for this one, I'm just going to change the color of it to like this yellowish color. And then we're just going to give ourselves an offset. And I could have done this with voiceover. Sorry. I just super excited I'm over here just doing this now that's a huge offset I don't like that it's too much so I'm gonna bring it in Ooh, that's still a little bit too much but let's see if we do point zero one zero let's see what that looks like what does that look like has it updated a lot of times when you're manipulating the numbers it'll just there we go that's better okay so let's apply that I like it because it cut out the little notch by her arm and it also cut out this space. I think that looks good. So let's apply that. And now we have a background for her. Yay! That's better. And then these two. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I think this needs to be... Is it grouped? Okay. So it is grouped already. So I'm going to do an offset for that too. It's already set at 0 0.10. Um, what's a bummer is I can't see what that looks like. So let's just say apply and if I don't like it... <gasps> Perfect. Yes, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we are good to go. I don't know that I'm going to use black paper in the background of them. So I'm going to do this one separate from that paper. Let's just give it a different color. I just choose colors. I don't care. This doesn't mean I'm actually going to cut it out in these colors. Oh, that's the same red from earlier. Let's use this one. Okay. I just want these all to be different colors. So when I go to cut them, I'm not having to stick to what they're, you know what I'm saying? Putting them together on the same uh, cutting paper. So I'm going to go and choose what I want for this lady. I kind of liked her in red, but it's kind of weird. Mm -hmm -hmm. We'll see. Okay, so I'm just going to, you know, make it on my... Probably going to use the Explore machine, to be honest, because the Cricut Joy just... Sometimes it just wants to do some funny things when it's cutting, and i rather just make sure that all these little intricate bits actually get cut right. So I will be back. <laughs> True fashion is already having issues, so I made her a little bigger, and this time it came out better. You know, it happens, guys. And then I used a stickier mat, too, just to make sure that the paper was really stuck down. Um, so, there she is. She looks good. So I will cut her out. Sorry, I didn't turn the light on. <laughs> I'll be back. So, I got Tonic's Ginger Pie. I'm going to be using that a lot, I think. Um, let me close this. I think that's it for right now. Oh my goodness. I was gonna check to make sure that this cut before I unloaded it, but guess what? It cut. Oh my gosh. I had it on Carstock Plus, but you know, I mean, this is tonic glitter paper, which is super thick. Let me turn this sideways so I can take this off without ruining my paper. And what I mean by that is making the paper like a curly husk. <laughs> and let's get this guy off of here. Okay. Um. All right, so that's the one that didn't work. This one works. This is great. I'm just going to clean this out and then just layer these guys up. So I'm going to glue this on here. In the meantime, I'm also going to turn on my hot glue gun so I can get going on the other pieces. I went with this because I thought it would look like icing, you know, I thought. So little white parts. I don't know. That's what I went with. <laughs> because I know it's a lot of white and brown, which is like, eh, not anything to write home about. But we're going to put the red, I think I'm going to use red, around here. Um pom-pom trim and stuff so um yeah so i'm just gonna glue these down i'll clean this out obviously really well Oop. and then glue it down to this piece and we'll go from there if i'm ready for this but <laughs> we'll see how it goes okay so we have this little guy again a lot of brown oopsie i haven't even stuck it down really well and then we have her and then we're going to what I'm going to do is stick, I think this on the back of this would be the easiest thing to do. Um, the other thing we can do is just lay this out like this and, you know, add the trim. Um, whatever you want to do. Uh, this I did pick up at the Dollar Tree not too long ago, and they have tons of it, so hopefully you can find some too if you want. So what I was saying is, um, you know, I can just put it down at the base here and then have this on top. But I was going to go put it all around. I don't know. <laughs> 
so let's go for it. Uh, okay, guys. So again, have fun and, you know, do extra, but just not overwhelmingly bulgy and please don't add extra things that aren't in the pocket and all that kind of stuff that happens at times. I think what happens is people get excited and they want to add all these extra things, but if you want to do that, then, you know, maybe join a swap where the person, that's what is necessary, right? And there are swaps like that where it's like crazy. Look at it. Just a little something. That's cute. I don't know if I want this the whole thing showing or not, so it's barely showing on the edge. Um, you know, do a personal swap, but when you're joining my swaps, they aren't super crazy because they got to be packaged up a certain way, and we need to respect that, guys. Please. So, let's put this over here. Again, right on the edge of the paper. I'm not really able to see where that is right now, so that's okay. So, I just kind of mitered it here to go around the corner. <gasps> And I'm going to have to make it so that it looks about the same, huh? So it looks nice? I don't know. I wasn't really concentrated on that, but I guess we could pay attention to that a little bit. So I'm going to come around the corner. Oopsie. Ooh, that was hot. Too trot. On my finger. Again, I'm kind of pulling it. I suppose you can uh, stretch this a little bit. I don't know if you noticed that. Well, you probably didn't notice, but I was pulling that. I didn't mean to, but it does have some stretch to it if you need to try to get something where you need it, right? I'm going to put a little glue there on that one. Kind of work this in a way that... There we go. <laughs> Cute. Oh my goodness. So again, loaded pocket. We already have extra things in here that are bigger. I think the ephemera folder, we should look at that more of a die cut. I mean, it was pretty much die cuts before. But, you know, it's nice to add other little things, right, that people might use. But when it gets thick, 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 that's not what we're looking for, guys. It's not a treat swap, and it's not that kind of thing, you know? Okay. Um, again, I want to pull it and turn this way. Oh, perfect. What I'm going to do is cut it off right before this little guy, I guess. I had gotten some goo on those scissors. I need to clean them off because they do not want to cut anymore since that happened. Probably could have put one more little pom-pom in there, but this actually works out really well because I was thinking, I'm like, where am I going? Ooh. There was ink here. That's completely going to be covered up, so that's good. <laughs> so um, my little lady is going to have to go off the edge a little bit. And I was going to put her in that bottom corner, so guess what? We're going to put that in the bottom corner. Actually, I probably still need this. Let's turn it back on just in case. Okay, and I'm, you know, kind of getting this done in a timely manner, but I am probably going to go ahead and, I don't know, I feel like I need to put, well, once I put this out here, look at it, how cute. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to need hot glue to glue that down. From the inside, it still has that little decoration, which is cute. You can see it on the inside. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, what I was trying to say is, in this area, I'm going to put hurt anyway. And I didn't want the little things kind of in the way, so that actually works out um, a little bit. Because it's still there. Maybe I should glue them in a way so you still see them. What do you guys think? Ah, uh, it'll be fine. It's going to hang off the edge there. Okay. Uh, so let's go for it. What I'm going to do is put hot glue, hot glue, hot glue, not on the little bolitas. I'm going to have to do this a little bit at a time, I have a feeling. Oh, that glue is hot. <laughs> it went right through the paper, you know. Like the heat of it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to hold that just a little bit. <laughs> Holding it very little. We can lay this out. And then pick this up. And continue gluing, making sure, oopsie, we're picking up wherever we had left off with the hot glue. And not trapping our little pom-pom trim. Oh my gosh. You guys, that's really fun. Okay, and then... I have my home for the holidays, like up here again, basically keeping it, you know, within what's going on here. And then our lady, I'm going to have her here popped up a little bit, especially because these guys are there. 
Actually, you know what I do? I'm going to cut this guy off. <laughs> that seems weird. I'm going to stick it under and tuck him in on the other side. Uh, I need some better scissors. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but we just need to get rid of this guy. Now, I can tuck it in over here if I wanted to. Kind of interesting. Like I said, it has stretchiness. That's so weird. Okay, let's try to do this and not burn ourselves. What if I put it, like, right here? And I need something to help me push that in there without touching it. Okay, I'm going to hold that down until it's okay, set up. We're going to okay. do some Alberta. different stuff. Look at that. And she can come right down here, a little dimensional here. Oh my gosh. Okay, and it just works out better if I turn this a little bit, so that's what I'm going to do. Again, as high up as I can get it. That still fits in here really nicely. So home for the holidays. Let me get some dimensionals on the back of her right here. Okay, and I'll be right so back. So I've got some dimensionals, but I'm also going to put some hot glue just to make sure everything stays. So dimensionals. Ton of hot glue. Maybe even on the dimensionals. However. <laughs> and we're just going to pop her in here. Between these things. Pay attention to how this is where this is going to close out. About there. She's about here. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to hold that down, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Oh, my goodness. Um, I wanted to get all four done. I think what it, in the next video, I'll have the four pockets done. That way, I stay on it myself instead of just doing one at a time. It's nice to just kind of get them all done. So, that's what that looks like for now. And it feels so much sturdier just having added those little bits. I am going to put another piece on the back. I'm just kind of showing you, you know putting the matte layers and doing whatever it is decorating it it's relatively flat you guys I didn't you know other than these little things it's still pretty flat okay again this has to go into a flat rate priority envelope which I have one right here so you just have to you know just be real mindful even if you're sending in four and you have a box that you're going to swap yours back out and you might have swap partners who only send in the two. So they are going to be having this. And this is always our standard, pretty much this and like a f the small flat rate box. But you can see how that would fit in there nicely, even if it's in a bag. So again, the sizing on this, and I'm sorry I didn't mention it in the last video. I was like, I'll get it right now. And it was such a crazy day, you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm still reeling from it. Nine and a half by 12 and a half. Okay, nine and a half tall, 12 and a half um, in the width. But the depth, obviously, you know, you can open it up. But if you open it up like this, you're taking... you see how that moves from there to there? You're taking away height, so you can't make it super thick. But this would fit in here just fine in its packaging with everything fitting inside of it, right? So, sorry, it's just getting caught because it's the corners, you know? But it'll fit in here nicely. So it can't be... you guys even... you saw what I did, and it's not even that thick, and it's already kind of maxing out. So keep that in mind, please. Uh, you know, this time around... If they are too thick or too bulky and huge, I'm not going to swap them out. I know before I always say, well, I'll still try to find a way. It's not going to happen, guys. I'm sorry. Because it's just not fair to everybody else and they get smashed. Or like when I shove them in there, protect your swap as you send it in. I will send yours back if you send in two or four. I know if you have four, you're having a box. Okay, that's great. But not everyone's going to have the box. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and I'm just going to finish it with a, a Velcro. Uh, for this one, again, if you're, you know, you can fashion something a little different if you're using a ribbon or whatever. Um, what I'm trying to impress upon you is the pocket itself has to be this pocket with the 5x7 background with the 3 quarter inch pocket here, the half inch pocket here. Um, I wish I could have gotten a little further today, but I'm just showing you my matte layers and kind of my design. Again, keeping in mind, not too crazy, guys. <laughs> okay? And everything you're putting in here has to fit in here. Okay, so the way I envision it's like my three bows or rosettes here, my little extra treat here. Um, you know, my die cuts probably can go in here too because this is a thicker pocket, so the die cuts aren't going to be super thick. They can go in here packaged in a little package or in a little glassine bag or whatever. Um, my ornament's going to go up here. Probably with my uh, glitter mix, I actually, or my shaker mix, I actually got some little glass vials because they look cute. I'm going to put right here and just kind of decorate the top of it. Um, I'm probably forgetting some of the other things, but, oh, and then a dangle or a rosette or whatever else, you know, picks little, um, uh, what's those things called? <laughs> Paper clips that look cute, which is probably what I'll do. So these guys, literally, it's going to be right on the edge. So I always forget which one goes at the bottom or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, should you put the side that's harsh down? I think so, huh? Okay, so I always like to close them like this just so I know that they're already perfect lined up. And then I will place it like literally right here. 
squish down. Not. Oh, I can see there's a spot where it doesn't have glue. See, things happen. That's weird. Let me try to get a little hot glue on there. So at least something will help it. And then when I bring this over, I'm paying attention to it being the right height. And it is right there. I don't know if you can see that. Like right on the edge. Okay. So I'm sticking my finger inside so I can kind of push that together. And hopefully when I open this up, it'll just open up. There we go. Again, if you're going to line this, obviously you would line it first before you do your fastener. But um, that is it, guys. So next time we will load our pocket up with some different things. I'm just going to go little by little. Um, not so little by little. This one, honestly, I thought this video was going to be faster. Um, but look, I have this peppermint bark. And you guys, I couldn't make that fit any perfect. I just saw it at the store. And I, you know, you have a, I think you're a pretty good judge of character of thicknesses and tall, you know, measurements and things like that just being a paper crafter I thought this would fit in here really nicely and look it so and obviously if I wanted to decorate it I could and then my other things are here you know um, so that will probably be my treat I might include a couple other things but like I said it's the minimum guidelines and what fits inside of here comfortably you guys let's not get too too wild so when I come back I might have some of these in green uh, with the same thing going and oh that little eye for holidays i think i'm going to dot it with like a rhinestone because i think it'll look cute so put a little red rhinestone in there just to bring some red to it all right guys have fun please don't let my um <laughs> guidelines you know scare you it's not scary it's just sticking to the rules guys <laughs> that's all it is i don't know what happens people get excited and i know i have tons of ideas i would love to do with this it's not going to happen you know it's just too much so you do have to make choices and please don't i feel like no it has to be everything and i'm going to do it please don't do that please don't do that um, okay, I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.